I was almost aborted. My mom got pregnant with me when she was 15. My dad was 17 at the time, and he was a drug dealer. So having an abortion, getting rid of this old lump of cells, would have been a pretty convenient move for both of them. My mom got pregnant again a year or two after she had me, and she had an abortion then. So they took out one of my siblings. My mom and her sister combined got pregnant five times when they were in their teens. They had three abortions and me and my cousin Brandy. 40% survival rate for the original five. My mom had another abortion when I was a teenager, another sibling gone, and then she had my two brothers. I'm glad my mom didn't abort me because I had some pretty dope stuff to do as you're about to see in this very video. Now, the abortion debate usually centers around issues like when human personhood begins and what rights a woman has over what goes on in her own body. But as with most moral debates, I think about this in terms of imaging God and degrading the image of God. Let's read a quick passage from the opening chapter of the Bible, Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, in my video, Norm MacDonald, The Image of God, we discussed what it means to be created in the image of God. The Bible never gives a clear explanation of what the phrase image of God means, but when we examine the main passage in Genesis 1, we see that it has something to do with three relationships. Man's relationship with God, man's relationship with other human beings, and man's relationship with nature. Human beings, both male and female, can image God in these relationships. In another video, Mark Zuckerberg, The Image of God, we saw another important component of the doctrine drawn from the larger context of Genesis 1. The passage about man being created in God's image is immediately preceded by God creating the universe. God creates, God creates, God creates, God creates, God creates, God creates, and then God creates man in his image after his likeness. One possible implication of the passage in context is that man is supposed to image God in creating, like when we make epic videos. But now we're going to look at another way human beings image God, namely in producing children. In Genesis chapter 5 we read, This is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Male and female he created them, and he blessed them and named them man when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. God created man in his likeness. Then Adam fathered a son in his own likeness after his image. I've seen a lot of people claim that when the Bible says Adam fathered a son in his own likeness, it means that Adam's offspring were no longer the image of God because of sin and the fall. So Adam and Eve were created in the image of God, but they sinned so their children were no longer the image of God. But we can't agree with an interpretation that contradicts what other passages about the image of God say, and Genesis 9-6 and James 3-9 say that people long after sin and the fall are still created in the image and likeness of God. At most, you could say that since Adam fathers a son in his own likeness, he fathers a son who no longer images God properly, even though he's still the image of God. You could also say that since Adam's descendants are the image of God and the image of Adam, we're constantly confronted with a choice. 
the choice of whether to image God in our relationships with others or to image Adam in those relationships. When we image God, we somehow reflect the eternal nature of God. When we image Adam, we reflect a kind of selfishness that seeks to replace God with something else. But let's think about how human beings image God in producing children. In Genesis 1.26, God says, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. When you first read this, you might think that God is talking to the angels or something, but man isn't created in the image of angels. This is the triune God. Man is created in the image of the triune God. Based on this verse, some have claimed that God is telling us that each human being is a kind of trinity composed of body, soul, and spirit. But there's nothing in this passage about body, soul, and spirit. There is, however, a unity and a diversity in this passage that has to do with human beings. Where's the unity? God creates man. Where's the diversity? Male and female. Watch what happens when we go back to Genesis 5. A son is generated within Eve's body. Eve, with some help from Adam, generates a son. Remember, Eve is the image and likeness of God. Eve, who is the image of God, generates a son, who is the image of God, and thus Eve and her son image the eternal generation of God the Son within the nature of the Trinity. Keep in mind, a human being generating another human being is very, very different from eternal generation. All of the ways we image God are finite, temporal reflections of the infinite, eternal God. But Eve generating a son does image the eternal generation of the divine son. Look more closely at this passage and you'll see something else. Male and female were both named man. The Hebrew word for man here is Adam. So, Adam is a generic name for humanity, similar to our word mankind. In fact, many translations translate man here as mankind. But there's also a specific person who's named Adam. The word Adam can refer to humanity in general, but it can also refer to a specific man. So, Adam is Adam. Adam, the person, is Adam, the kind of thing human beings are. But Eve is Adam as well. Eve, the person, is Adam, the kind of thing human beings are. Seth is also Adam. Seth, the person, is Adam, the kind of thing human beings are. Adam, the person, is not Eve, the person. Eve, the person, is not Seth, the person. Seth, the person, is not Adam, the person. But Adam is Adam, Eve is Adam, and Seth is Adam. Look familiar? It should. It looks very similar to a conceptual diagram of the Trinity. To be clear, once again, the triune God is very, very different from human beings and from human relationships. The triune God and the relationships within the triune God are infinite and eternal. Human beings are finite temporal images of the infinite, eternal, divine nature. Persons of the Trinity share the same divine essence. Human persons function as separate beings. But a man and a woman producing a child, a man who's Adam, and a woman who's Adam, producing a child who's Adam, a man who's the image of God, and a woman who's the image of God, producing a child who's the image of God, does reflect something about the eternal nature of God. So, human beings are created in the image of God, and we image God in a lot of different ways. We image God in our ever-increasing dominion over the natural world. We image God in our relationships with other people. We image God in our love for the persons of the Trinity. We image God when we create things. We also image God when we produce children. When a woman, who's the image of God, becomes pregnant, another image of God is actualized within her. 
Before, there was only the potential to produce another image of God, the potential to image God by producing the image of God. But at conception, the image of God is actualized, meaning that unless something stops it, the offspring generated within her will continue to develop the capacities to image God. In generating an offspring, the woman images God by producing someone who is the image of God. In generating an offspring, the woman and her child image the eternal generation of the son. In sharing the same human nature with the man and their offspring while remaining distinct persons, the woman and the man and their offspring image the triune nature of their creator in whose image they were created. But the man and the woman also image our original parents. And so when the woman becomes pregnant, when the image of God is actualized within her, either the woman alone or the man and the woman together have a choice. The choice to either reflect the eternal divine nature or...